It's Monday night, and you know what that means. Downstairs Entertainment, in association with Davy Boy Productions, presents Rex Riveter, Private Eye. <laughs> This season builds on the characters and plot lines from previous episodes, so if you haven't caught up, we recommend you go back and listen to the episodes that you missed. We'll be here when you get back. Welcome back! And now, ladies and gentlemen, Rex Riveter, Private Eye, in part one of The Long Con. Rex Riveter, Private Eye, look at you! Hello, Lou. Uh, no, I mean, look at you, you look like hell. Less small talk, more whiskey. You got it. Top shelf or the usual? Usual. Make it a double. It's always a double. Hmm. Well, then make it a triple. Rough night, huh? One of the roughest. This one's on me, then. Haven't seen you for a while, Rex. But I guess that's nothing new. I've been... busy. Thanks for the hooch. Forget about it. Good timing, though. She'll be up in a minute. Hey, look. I gotta help this joker down at the end of the bar. All night long, he's been busting my chops. He'll probably leave me a whopping five-cent tip. You need anything else? No. I'm good. Thanks, Lou. Hey, that's what barkeepers are for. All right, pal. Keep your shirt on. Lou's place. It's a little spot hiding just south of Chinatown, known for cheap tiger milk and good advice. I come in here once in a while to get a little of both, and to check up on an old client. My name is Riveter, and I'm a bum. Blue skies, Sometimes it doesn't seem that long. Tonight it feels like a lifetime ago. Alice Kremley was her name back in 51. Now she goes by Lila. She's a songbird with a voice like a warm fire on a cool autumn night. Crackling with life. I'm reminded of the smell of burning leaves in the backyard and the occasional chill breeze that swirls around me like ribbons on a child's Christmas morning. The man staring back at me from the mirror behind Lou's bar wears a grimace. Memories of things that never were. He's got on my suit, but there's a tattered bandage around his head and he looks like he hasn't slept since spring. I turn away because I don't recognize him. And it's impolite to stare at strangers. In times like this, we still need to keep our manners about us. Lou wrestles the lug at the end of the bar into dropping a couple of greenbacks before pouring any more suds. After the transaction, I watch the barkeep sling a rag over his shoulder and saunter back over to my little spot at his watering hole. She sounds good tonight, yeah? Always does. Yeah, but tonight, she's earning her dough. Always does. Things are going good for her. You know what I'm saying? She brings people in. Something about her voice. You know what I mean? Yeah. She, um... She plays short sets, though. But it's okay. Gives people more chance to have a snort. She's making you a fortune. I get it. Short sets, Riveter. Sometimes only one or two songs. And once in a while, she comes up here for a little refreshment. Club soda. But nobody else knows that. She's still on the straight and narrow. 
Good for her. Are you hearing me, Rex? She comes up to the bar. Right where you're sitting, maybe. You think I should leave? You normally do. You come in, you sit over there in the dark corner and have one drink. But tonight... She's got herself a steady bow, you know. Big fella. Good guy, fast I can tell. He comes in most nights and walks her home. I can't get a read on you, Riveter. Never could. But tonight, something's different. Different? Yeah. You always struck me as one of those slow fuse kind of guys. And underneath it, there's always this slow heat, like things could boil over given the right amount of pressure, I guess. Seen some things in your line, I would imagine. But tonight, I get nothing from you. No boil, no fuse. I've seen empty guys walk in here. Happens once in a while. Fella gets canned from work, or his old lady is making time with the milkman. But you... You're like that Clot Reigns fella and the Invisible Man. You're here, but you ain't. Maybe it's just a bandage. I gotta tell you, I'm not sure I like what I'm seeing. It's a little spooky. I'm only mentioning it because, well, I got a business to run, you see, and I like you, you know, for a gumshoe. But I don't want any trouble in here. You understand me? Sure, Lou. I understand. I'll go. Nothing personal, Riveter. You're a good Joe, too. What you've done for Lila is, well, neither of us will be here where we are without what you've done. But I got responsibilities and all. Ah, forget about it, Lou. It's all in the past. What do I owe you? Nothing, pal. Just take care of yourself, okay? You really look like... Oh, hell. Rex? I see a reflection in the mirror behind the bar. She stepped out of the single spotlight on the tiny stage. and is moving quickly through the smiling crowd. Rex? Riveter? I turn just in time. Lila throws herself into my arms and kisses me. She has to stand on her tiptoes to do it. My head begins to thrum. I tell myself it's from the drinks Lou poured. Or the two wraps on my noggin I got from Pete. I'm a terrible liar. Alice Kremley settles back down to earth. I see concern in her eyes mixed with Something I don't recognize. A few of the patrons stare at the scene. It is you. Oh, Rex, I'm so glad to see you. Hello, Alan. Lila? Lie? (laughs) Yes, of course. A slow dawning, remembering where we are and who she is. Show business, even on a small scale, is about the illusion. How... How are you, Rex? Rex? He's great! He just stopped in to wet his whistle, ain't that right, pal? I'm fine, Alan. Lila? How are you? Me? I'm grand. Here, let me buy you a drink. It's the least I can do, for an old friend. Lou set us up. Whatever Mr. Riveter is drinking, and I'll have my usual. Are you sure? Come on, Rex. I've got a few minutes while the boys in the band cool their lips. Let's talk. Lila takes my arm and leads me to a booth and slides in next to me, never letting go. Maybe she thinks I'll sneak off when she's not looking. Now, it wouldn't be the first time. So? So? How are you, Rex? How do you answer that question? You look... I'm glad to see you. How you been? It's good to see you, too. I... I've missed you. It's been a while. Four and a half years. Just over. Has it? Yes. What have you been doing with yourself? Still working as a private detective? Of course. You're good at it. Helping people, I mean. You still in that same place above the deli? I'm doing great. Grand, in fact. My life is, um... I'm truly blessed. I'm glad. 
You sound great. Yeah? Not too bad for a girl from Jasper, huh? Not bad at all. If they could see me now. Well, not all of them, you know. We sit together. In awkward silence for a few minutes. Two people who shared a moment in a past neither wants to relive. It's hard to tell sometimes when it's time to leave. But before long, my palms begin to sweat. That's a good enough sign for me. It's been nice seeing you, Lila. But I should go. Already? Rex, I haven't seen you in... I just stopped in to... Why? Why do you stop in? What? You come in every few months. You sit over there at that same stool every time. Lou never says a word about it after. I guess you don't want me to know, but I do. I see you. Just as plain as I see you right now. There's not enough shadow for you to hide in. You're kind of hard to miss. Well, actually, that's not true. I miss you all the time. Myla. Why are you here tonight, Rex? Every other time you come in, you sit in the dark. But tonight, you sat right up front. Did you want me to see you? Myla, I'm... She reaches across the table and takes my hand in both of hers. Alice, you know who I am. You're only one of a handful of people that does. What's going on, Rex? Something's wrong, isn't it? You can talk to me. I should go. Don't leave on account of me. A shadow falls across our table, and fear flits across Lila's eyes for just an instant. It's quickly replaced with a shine that any man would kill to see. Jimmy! She squeals with delight, jumps out of her seat and into arms made from galvanized steel. Am I interrupting? Never! I stand, getting ready to leave. Don't go, Rex. I want you to meet somebody. Jimmy Sloan. Jimmy, this is one of my oldest and dearest friends, Rex Riveter. Riveter? Jimmy? James, if you don't mind. Only Lila here calls me Jimmy. Lila, you're up! Oh, that's my cue. Jimmy, be a dear and keep Rex company. I won't be long. After this, we can go out for drinks. Sure thing, doll. Lila makes her way back onto the stage. Sashay. What? I think they call it a sashay. You know, her walk. Part sway, part glide. Yeah, Lila sashays. <laughs> I suppose she does. I'm not typically the jealous type, so I hope you don't get the wrong idea when I ask you. What are you doing here? Me? I was just leaving. Already? It's late. Lila always says the night's still young. It's Friday. It's Thursday. Not everywhere. Somewhere it's Friday, right? Not here. I slide out of the booth and Jimmy shadows me to the door. Look, I'm going to catch hell with Lila if I let you go. You're going to catch out with me if you don't. Oh, a tough guy. <laughs> All right, mister. I guess I'll make your excuses to Lila. <laughs> Do that. The smell of Lila's perfume hangs on me like a feather boa as I leave Lou's place. I hail a cab. I should have gone straight home after St. Fibiana's. But I wasn't ready to face the darkness yet. <laughs> I'm still not. But there's nowhere else to go. So, home it is. The broken glass still lies on the ground from where I threw a bottle of rock at it. Father Lozado. Was that... Only yesterday? The bottle's dead now, and so... So is the Padre. There are some things I just can't clean up. My gun and suit end up hanging across the back of a chair in the corner of my bedroom before I fall into bed. I'm so proud of you, Rex. Look at you, big boy. Not sleeping in your clothes for the first time in months. Such a big boy. Dreams come. But thankfully, I don't remember them clearly. Just a vague sensation that things aren't right. Ice cubes fall into a highball 
only to be drowned by whiskey. Except the color is all wrong. Red instead of gold. The sound is wrong, too. Ice cubes jingle like keys in a door. The door opens and footsteps walk across the broken glass. I awake with a start from a fog, but I know what's wrong. I can feel it. Someone's in my apartment. This is Rhiannon McAfee. And this is Greg McAfee of Downstairs Entertainment. Greg and I are super nerdy. Speak for yourself. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, you'd be easier to understand if you took off your Batman mask while we're recording. Whatever. (laughs) Anyway, Greg loves sprinkling historical facts, places, and stories all throughout Rex Riveter. And Rhiannon loves being our dramaturg and putting together packets for our actors about all the history of Rex. It's that nerdiness and love of history that attracts me to shows like Timeless. And my love of the Old West and secret desire to be an old-timey gunslinger that draws me to shows like Westworld and Hell on Wheels. Because I'm a bad mofo. I could have been White Earp. Yes, honey. Uh, Or or Doc Holliday. Uh Uh-huh. Or Bat Masterson. I have no idea who that is. Clearly, you haven't made it to episode 12 of the Drift and Ramble podcast. I'm on episode 10, but I'll be there soon. The Drift and Ramble podcast is what your American history class should have been. Part audio drama, part history lesson, all entertaining. Steve Blizzen brings the tales of the Old West and American legends to life in Drift and Ramble every Sunday with a new episode that explores the people, places, and stories that shaped a nation. If you love the Old West, you will love Drift and Ramble. You can subscribe to Drift and Ramble on iTunes or your favorite podcatcher. We love Drift and Ramble and think you will too. But for now, we'll ditch the Old West for 1955 and get back to the world of Rex Riveter. I really could have been a gunsling. Or Elmer McCurdy. Not funny. It's a little funny. Witty banter fading out? Honey. It says witty banter. That doesn't make any sense. Honey, if it's in parentheses, you don't say it. It's it's like a direction, like Um, a stage direction. So not... You've been an actor for how many years? One. No, that's not true. (laughs) Honey, can you just go back to the hole in the wall? Where are you? You mean the bat cave? (laughs) And now we return to Rex Riveter Private Eye in part one of The Long Con. I wake with a start from a noise at my front door. Someone's in my place. Their feet crunch against the glass on the floor. They move cautiously, light steps like a cat walking through a puddle. My gun and holster are across the room. What the hell? I'm tangled in the sheets from a fitful sleep. Trying to unwrap myself quietly is taking too much time, so I lunge out of bed towards the chair where I left my weapon. Unfortunately, I miscalculate and end a few inches short. My legs wrapped like a mermaid. I hear footsteps moving closer and try to drag myself to the chair, but it's no use. This is how it ends for me. Wrapped in my own filthy sheets in a ramshackle apartment in Tinseltown. Jesus, Rex, are you all right? Alice Kremley. Now Lila stands in the doorway from my living room, staring down at me. She's in blue flats and a matching silk dress with large oriental flowers and a sash around her waist that accents her... uh, Are you all right, Rex? Yeah, I'm fine. What are you doing here? You left. What? You left. I went up to sing and you left. How did you... Are you having some trouble? I'm tangled up. Maybe I could help. I can do it. (laughs) Do you mind? Not at all. Would you wait in the other room? (laughs) But I'm having so much fun watching. Fine. I'll wait in there, but can I at least leave the door open? No. You never let me have any fun. I'll be right in here if you need anything. I get loose from the Chinese finger trap that are my sheets and dress myself in a clean shirt and slacks. 
As I open the door to the rest of the apartment, I can hear Alice in the kitchen. Oh, you're loose. I found a dustpan, but no broom. What? Also, I've got coffee on. Coffee? You found coffee. Well, it's instant. What are you doing here? And how did you get in? Didn't you ask me that already? How did you get in? You didn't used to repeat yourself so much. Is that a new thing? How did you... This isn't my first time here, Rex. Or did you forget? You have a key? No. But you still leave your spare in the same place. Old habits, I guess. All right. That explains why you're inside. But why are you here? Broom. What? Do you have a broom? All that glass. Someone's going to get hurt. And can I open a window? It's... Your place could use some fresh air. What time is it? Four. A.M.? Take a look outside. It's dark. Could be smog. I missed you, Rex. Lila, I... Alice. Why are you here? Like I said, I missed you. I'm not going to get a straight answer from you, am I? You still like it the same? What? Your coffee. You still like it the same? Where's Johnny? Jimmy. Jimmy. Like your women, right? With a little hooch in them? Sadly, there's no hooch, so I guess you'll have to have it plain. What? Your coffee. Can you accept it plain? Lila. What the? That'll be Johnny. Jimmy. Jimmy. Lila glides to the door and opens it. Standing in the hall is Jimmy Sloan. Hi, sweetie. Come in. He lumbers inside, hat in his hand. His eyes drift around the room and eventually land on me. Mr. Reveter, sorry for the late hour. Lila here, you said you'd be awake, were you? Of course he was, Jimmy. Has Lila ever led you astray? Every day. And you've loved every minute of it. <laughs> <laughs> now come on in here, you lug. You're letting all the high class out. It's good of you to see me at this hour. Rex is a peach like that, aren't you, Rex? What? I said you're a peach. Sit down, boys. Talk your talk. I'll get the coffee. Lila heads back into the kitchen, and Jimmy folds himself into one of my chairs. You were asleep, weren't you? Sloan lights a cigarette, then offers me one. I don't remember the last smoke I had. Must have been before the desert. My lungs burn a little. I want to hire you. Hire me? Yeah, you and Lila's go back a ways, right? She mentioned you, once. You're a private dick, ain't you? I get a good look at him now. Sloan. Jimmy Sloan. I remember you. You're a boxer. Was a boxer. Retired. I saw you once. Down in Long Beach. I never fought in Long Beach. I was in Long Beach. At a bar with a television. You were at the garden. Black Jack Billy Fox. Yeah. A highlight of my career. We were the undercard. That kid beat the crap out of me. That was before his bout with La Mata. You kept dropping your left. Mister, I could have put up my left, my right and three grand. And he still would have creamed me just the same. 47 of his 48 wins was KO's. He had enough power to stop a freight train. His bob and weave was a blur and he had a chin like an anvil. But you know, the thing I remember most about him was his footwork. That guy was Fred Astaire up in that ring. There was no way I was keeping up with him. I think he could have taken the matter. Even without the fix, but of course, Blinky had to be sure. Anyway, that's all in the past. See, I need your help. <sighs> Sorry, pal. You got the wrong guy. What? Loyalty says you're a private snooper. Retired. Retired? Oh, okay. Sure thing, Riveter. Uh, I guess, uh, well, Lila says you helped a friend of hers once. She said it was worth a try. Thanks, anyway. Sorry for the trouble getting you out of bed and all. It's just, well, you don't want to hear. Me and Lila will go, let you get back to sleep. Helped a friend? Yeah, some girl she used to know. Got herself in a little bit of trouble with some guy. She said you helped her out. Says you're a good Joe, so I thought, well, it don't matter. Hey, how about some advice? No, thanks. No, I mean for me. You know me girl a long time. Your girl? Well, I'd like her to be me girl, but I can't ever seem to get her to... Every time I think I might be starting to figure her out, she changes the game on me, you know what I mean? It's so frustrating. What's that got to do with me? 
Well, only person I see her talk to is Lou, and he ain't been much help. So, you got any advice? Look, Sloan. If she's with you, it's because she wants to be. You want to keep her? Make sure you do everything in your power to, to let her know you're glad she's there. Tell her every day. Never take her for granted. If she sticks around, it's because you're doing something right. Yeah. So you don't get her either, huh? <laughs> Good luck, Sloan. He stands, and I wonder how thin the air is up there. He turns to leave, but pivots, again to face me. What do you know about boxing around here? Well, I know the real action is elsewhere. New York, New Jersey, Nevada's becoming pretty big. Everywhere there's organized crime. Yeah, uh, about that. See, I was hoping to hire you to find me little brother. I think he might be involved with some bad people. Call a cop. You think I ain't? They told me there was nothing they could do. He's a grown man, mostly. I haven't heard from him in a couple of weeks, and I just want to make sure he's alright. If you ain't in that line anymore, maybe you know somebody that is. Look, what you got going on ain't none of my business. But if you point me in the right direction, I could make it worth your while. Worth my while? Sure. I made a couple of books in a poker game this afternoon and it's burning a hole in me pocket. What do you say to 20 bucks, just for some advice? 20 bucks? I know it ain't much, but it's all I got on me. You want advice? Spend your 20 on Lila. Your brother's old enough to get himself into a mess. He's old enough to get himself out. Yeah, he was supposed to be the bright one out of all of us. Except I think maybe he's got himself into something worse than he knows. Anyways, thanks, Riveter. I didn't do anything. You didn't take me 20. It's likely that Lila was listening from the kitchen. She comes in with a tray and three cups of coffee. She sets it all down and serves Sloane and I, then takes her own cup, staring at me across it as the steam rises. So, did you boys miss me? I think maybe we should go, honey. Mr. Riveter here ain't taking on any clients right now. Pish posh. You'll help, won't you, Rex? Look, I'm not really in that business Lila, don't do once. that, please. The man don't want to get involved. Can't say as I blame him. There's some rough people around this thing. I mean, if it were a fair fight in the ring, that'd be one thing. But these guys, they don't know what fair is, you see. They're not so tough. Tough guys don't call themselves by those kinds of names. Timmy the Squirrel and Handsome Johnny. Who has names like that? What did you say? I said, who has names like that? It's like they're in some kind of silly club and they give each other silly names. Handsome Johnny? Sure. And Greasy Fingers Larry and Tommy the Wizard of Odds Bamboozle. Are you sure? Isn't that one of them, Jimmy? Yeah, I heard his name somewhere, but I don't know how close. I'm in. See? I told you he would help. What? I'm in. And keep your dough, Sloan. This one's pro bono. I need to settle a score. Tonight's episode of Rex Riveter Private Eye stars Randy Cool with guest stars Don Oliwa as Lila and Tom Stewart as Jimmy Sloan and Daniel Novoa as Lou. It was written by Greg McAfee and is transcribed in San Diego, California. Tonight's episode featured musical performances by the Don Oliwa Trio. Dave Casteldioro on piano, John Murillo on tenor sax, Isaac Crow on bass and vocals by Don Oliwa. Rex Riveter Private Eye was produced by Downstairs Entertainment with recording, sound, and editing by Davey Boy Productions. Rex Riveter Private Eye is now a part of Fate Crafters Studios. Find other great shows at fatecrafters.net. The Rex Riveter theme, Nightmare, by the Artie Shaw Orchestra is used with permission of Music Sales Corp. Rex Riveter is directed by Rhiannon McAfee with vocal, sound, and technical direction by Dave Rivas. 
If you enjoyed tonight's episode, please find us on the internet at www.dsentertain.com or on the Facebook or the Twitter. Next Monday, catch our recap show, Riveting Conversations, wherever you listen to Rex for behind-the-scenes interviews with cast and crew. If you love our show, you can donate towards production costs at www.patreon.com slash rexriveter. And be sure to join us in two weeks, same time and place, for the exciting second part of Rex Riveter Private Eye and The Long Con. For Downstairs Entertainment, this is Greg McAfee speaking. 